Did you know you could get free context models directly in D5 Render? So let me show you what I mean. So typically, when you're working on your project, you import it, and it's kind of floating in the middle of nowhere, right? You basically have terrain for days, and there's just no buildings. The problem is, in the real world, we always have some sort of context, usually, you know, neighboring buildings, or even a forest in this case, right? The problem is, getting those 3D models has always been a pain. If you've been doing this long enough, you have to either rely on OpenStreetMaps or purchasing these models. Here's an example of what you typically have to do. You have to hop onto like CG Trader, find the tile, so the actual area of your project, and then see if it's even available for purchase. And it's usually these like simple blocky models. But look at this, look at that price tag. That's insane, it's a lot of money. And if you're doing projects all over the world, you're not gonna keep reusing the same tiles and it gets expensive, right? You know, you have to buy tile B over here, tile Z over there, it's, it's a headache. So what D5 did in 2.10 is they actually have a direct integration with OpenStreetMaps that's hidden right under terrain. So if you go to a terrain, and you go to city, you can plug in any address and you'll get the 3D model. So this project, uh, Westbrook, residents that we've done a couple times on this channel um, is located in Austin, Texas. So all I'm doing is I'm typing in Austin, Texas, and I don't know exactly where it is. You know, I'm just using this as an example, but you plug that in and you've got essentially, you know, like a 2D Google street map, right? So I could zoom in on the area that I want and all I have to do is hit selection and now it's giving me a little box that's going to import the 3D model of that area and when I'm talking about 3D model I'm talking about like the buildings the roads the street and the ground and even satellite info so right now these are the coordinates so this is like a good way for you to double check and here I'm getting a red error because my selection size is too large so I need to zoom in typically around like 3,500 by 3,500 uh, meters. That's kind of like the limit that I'm seeing. And if you don't believe me, yeah, we can kind of do this. Yeah. So uh, around there, around 4,000, I've noticed if it's like denser, like something like Manhattan, this number goes down, which makes sense because the larger the area, the bigger the file is and you know, compatibility and performance is always an issue. So I'm just going to shrink it to something somewhere around here. I can also filter what I'm pulling in. So I talked about the building, the road, greenery, water, and satellite. So I'll bring in satellite just so you could see it and I'll hit import. And so I'm not even gonna speed this up. So I'm literally talking through the import because I want you to see how fast this is, okay? Like that was that, I, I mean, what is that? Like four seconds and it brought in this whole 3D model. So this, as you can see, it's got satellite information, right? It actually has like the street names. No, just kidding. That's not street names. Was that copyright? Um, it's got the actual aerial, right? It's got all the buildings and the roads. And what it does is it puts it all nicely in a group right here. So you see where it says city? I can toggle the buildings on and off, right? So there's that aerial. And I can turn that off just to make things nice and clean. And now I've got the terrain under it and I'll hide the terrain just so you could see what exists if we don't have that. So that is our HDRI, right? So you can see we've got a lot of detail here. So I'm going to go back to my city and I'm going to toggle that back on just so we've got some ground, but this is great because now I can move this and plug my building in and now I have context and I specifically said move the city and not your project because let's say you're working with other people and you're importing models they should all be sharing the same origin so you're better off moving your city model to plug in where your project is rather than changing your project location okay so don't move where your project is move the city model Okay, and I'm just gonna lower this. Again, this isn't the same exact plot. This is my point. So now when I'm down here and I'm looking out, I've got, you know, actual context over here. So this is great because now you don't even have to model the neighboring buildings if you're doing something in an urban setting. So that's really nice. So let's talk about the other functionality that you get here. So it's grouped here. You could toggle it on and off. 
I like to put it on a layer, just call it like context or city. That way you could turn it off um, pretty easily. So building, if we go here, you can see everything that's selected. This is kind of nice, this elevation controller, because this is going to let you override the elevations. And then to take it one step further, if you don't even care about it being like super realistic, you could just switch to random elevation and it's just going to randomize all the heights. So it's gonna give you some nice jitter there. Um, so that's there. The next thing I want to point out is there's a base color controller and a base color map controller. And when I was first playing with this, I thought it was a little weird because check this out. If I go to assets and let's say I want to make like a, like a diagrammatic aerial, you know, I'm talking about like something like this. I want to look down, you know, I want it to be kind of like you know, super, super conceptual. So if I were to find like some sort of wood, right? Maybe like a basswood kind of thing, right? And I were to drag this out. It doesn't let me, okay? The reality is these models do not support the D5 material library. Instead, you have to kind of build your own material just using the color map or diffuse channel if you want something diagrammatic. Otherwise, you have to use the base color to tweak the actual look of it. So that was a little weird, but I spent a couple you know, minutes before and I was like, well, why isn't this working? So that is intentional. Um, I've confirmed that the next thing is opacity. So if you want it to be kind of like a glass and semi see through, um, you know, this is again, this is like total style choice. Um, some architecture firms do like to do it, you know, like little, little transparent, um, and kind of like a white, like, like this, just so it doesn't take too much away from the building. So you've got that as an option. So if you did use a base color map and you bring a texture in, you get all your typical you know, stretch and UV controls and a UV randomizer. So that's pretty sweet. So the next thing I wanna talk about is the road. So the road are all these little splines here. And again, you've got your base color controller, but I do wanna point out that you do have a width controller. So watch this. So I'm actually like dynamically increasing the width of the streets. So this is useful. Again, if we're talking about these like aerials, if you want the streets to kind of stick out a little bit more, you can make them a little bit thicker. So that's pretty handy. And the cool thing about this is like, they are separate from each other. So if you don't want any roads, you could toggle that off. And then if you're doing like, you know, a renovation and you have a building on your site and you don't want it to be there, you can actually just double click the building and they'll be here in your groups and you could just toggle it on and off. So that's really handy. Um, I've also noticed if you, this is in an area that has landmarks, um, you know, for example, I was pulling in Manhattan before. So if you search for like Empire State Building, it will pick it up if it is a landmark. So these are all like generic looking little buildings. But if there were any landmarks, which you can kind of see here, Texan Motor Center, if I hit Z, there we go. So your search will pick this up. So watch this. If I do Texan, there we go. So that's really handy if you're familiar with the neighborhood and you just want to get oriented. Um, I always find that really, really useful. So let me go back and let's collapse this. All right, so that's collapsed. The next thing we have, anything related to parks. That's what these guys are here. So if I darken this, there we go. We have all our parks there. And again, this is all toggleable and we'll have that little satellite image below. If you do have any water in the project, this will come over. And of course you have satellite. So. Overall, this is like a super handy tool. Great if you're just trying to get some sort of context. Um, I love how like simple it is with the import. I think the trickiest thing is actually like nailing the exact spot where your project is. Because if you're not familiar with the coordinates or have the address, it could be a little tricky. Uh, the other thing I will point out is you can import shape files if you do have them, but you know, just thinking about like the typical workflow, going back to that, like how difficult it is to like get these types of files into your 3D render has always been a pain in the butt. So I'm glad this is here. Um, I know they're actively working on this feature. I already got a preview of the next version of it and it looks amazing. Can't talk much about it, but I'll do an update to that. Um, anyways, if you have questions about this, drop in the comments. You guys know me. I try to get back to everyone. So if you've got a good comment, happy to respond. And if you like the video, leave a like, and if you made it this far, think about subscribing. So I'll see you next time.